what should have made me realize that I needed to change up some of the things that I was doing. Because every time I went to jail, okay, bye, Dad. We'll see you later. Like, it was no, like, love involved and no care or concern. Okay, this nigga will bail out. He'll be all right. You know what I mean? Their mom has some motherfucking, my, and my was serious. Their mom has some motherfucking traffic warrants. And they was putting her in the back of the car, taking her to jail. And my two was like, oh, my God, ma. Oh. And they was crying. I was like, if y'all motherfuckers don't get your ass in, go check your mother. Now, you ain't never cried for me. When I go, see you later, Dad. That's all I got. You know what I mean? And then my mom leave. Oh, all of a sudden, it's the end of the world. They're like, what the? F-? So that's what I know. Like, okay, I need to change up my children's perception of me because, like, <laughs> they was like, all right, man. How that should we get out? Smooth cut productions. 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 You know, a lot of people don't realize that this 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 industry will take a lot out of you. You got to like. You got to be ready to go and do what you need to do. Because, like, me, personally, I never really tripped off of, like, being in the limelight or really tripped off of, like, really being successful. You know, there's people that, that is really serious about it. There's people that, like, they, they want to be that and they feel like they nothing without, you know, having a claim to fame. I, I'm, I'm something without fame. I'm something without fortune. I'm something without, I'm, you know, I'm God's child. I'm not worried about what somebody think about me. I think the world of myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, you know, I took a break for a minute, but that was all due to choice. I mean, my publishing checks was coming in. I'm all right. It's it's, it's all right. And I, I lived, uh, you know, a good life, and I'm still living a good life. But I, I don't I don't choose to dictate myself off of just, oh, I'm an entertainer, and I just do rap. I, it's more to me than just rap. You know what I mean? Well, I thought that was very, because um, I was talking to the missing. And I asked him, I said one day, I said, man, where is Nocturnal? He says Noc had moved to Texas. Yep. And he didn't go into details about why. That's the thing I love about the Miz. He's never been one of God's stuff, even though he's in the entertainment business. And that's a rarity. Yeah. That's a rarity. Um, so I was talking to someone else, and they told me you went down to clean yourself up. Yeah. Because we all know we was kind of around during the same time. Everybody was drinking. It, it, it was almost like you were looked at. Look down upon if you didn't participate. Right. It was a. It was a. It was just too much. It was like you know that, and that's not the the person that I want to be for my family, for my children. It was just like it was. I was doing too much. You know, it was like you got ex pills, people handing you coke nonstop, people doing this. I'm, and that's just I, I've never had an addictive personality, and you know, music can get you caught up to where it's like, oh, you're not doing that. What you the police? What exactly. like you? You you got cranberry in your cup with no vodka, but you on your period, you on your menstrual, like you know what I mean. So it's like, it's like you know, it's 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 the devil's play. I mean, like we was talking about that earlier, but the whole point being, you just got to be true with yourself and who you are as a person. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like me personally, I don't need you know drugs and alcohol to feel good about myself. I mean, of course I like smoking weed. Of course I like you know, popping an egg pill, having sex with a woman, or like, you know, like, of course, who doesn't? Like, I mean, but that's not something that you're supposed to do every day. You're supposed to do things in a situation where it's for a, for a reason. I just, oh, I'm going to do this every day, and I'm going to turn up, turn down. Why not? Like, sometimes you got to turn down. I mean, you gonna, or you, you you get lost. What they call that? Lost in the sauce? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. And then you look up, be three years later, and you look in the mirror, and you don't like the person you see. Like, you know what I mean? Because it, it, ain't, it ain't the same you, you know? So sometimes you got to step back and, and regroup and be like, okay, how can I get myself back together as a human being? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Stop walking around looking like... It was it was zombies before they came up with <laughs> Before they came up with the zombie movies and all that shit. Motherfuckers were walking around like zombies, dope dog up and all kind of shit. They just didn't know that. They, that's really what a true zombie is. A dope dope motherfucker that ain't got no sense of life talking to us. Talking like, Look at it, do the stupid shit, walking on the street, street corner, seeing people that ain't there, and just screaming and hollering across the street, and ain't nobody there talking back to them. That's that's the real zombies. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You, know, you know, me dealing with family members, my own situations. What was it that made you decide to say I need to go get help? I'm just tired of like living like that. Like I, I didn't, I wasn't raised off of uh, the premonition and just feel like I needed to, you know, use drugs to be okay with myself. Like, I've been 
a person that's always been okay with myself. I I wasn't a person that struggled socially or anything like that. You know what I mean? I, I had friends, I had people that I was cool with and everything like so when I ended up entered myself into all this other stuff, it was just because it was there. It's not something that I really cared about doing. It was just something I did just because it was there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I mean sometimes you gotta reevaluate yourself and regroup and realize if you're around that stuff then of course you're going to do it because you don't want to feel like a misfit. But if you don't put yourself in those type of situations, then you ain't got to worry about it. Like you just put yourself in different circumstances where you ain't got to be involved with other people's social uh, uh, inaccuracy or whatever, whatever they feel like doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's the, it's the company you keep, which makes you and defines who you really can become and who you are. So you just got to keep better company when it comes down to, being serious about your craft and being serious about what you want to accomplish in life. You got to, you got to watch the people you hang around. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we always hear that word, um, somebody hitting rock bottom. Was there any particular incident that made you say, you know what? I know you said you looked in the mirror and didn't like the person you saw. Was yeah. there any particular incident? Because I had mine, which made me stop drinking. And I think we all have those particular things, or it may be a series of things. Well, one of the things that probably is really not that that crucial, but when I stopped liking my music, <laughs> that was my rock bottom. <laughs> when I didn't, when I wake up and do the wake up morning test, and I didn't like what I was rapping before because I was too drunk, and I was saying some bullshit, I'm slurring my words, and that that's. That's not good. Cause I, you know how artists are. They usually always like this. You know what I'm saying? No matter what. Even if even if it ain't just you, you still think it's the When you start not liking your own shit that you're making, something ain't right. Sometimes you gotta re, re regroup and and rebuild what you what you come to do because even the wake up morning test was like, oh, that shit that's some garbage. I recorded that and now you start looking at the engineer, why you let me record that poor? You got you got to try to find somebody to blame, but ultimately it's your fault. You know what I mean? Because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. You you didn't do what you were there to do. But you know, and then it came a time where even like okay, so my my wife had some some traffic warrants or whatever, and like <laughs> my children when I you know because I used to go to jail, I used to get in trouble, you know, and bail out whatever. I mean, you know, my lord, I, he I, my lord got a, a Hummer. A brand new H3, and his son had a, a Ducati, and they were both canary yellow. I'm like, oh, you got a, a Hummer Ducati out there? He was like, yeah, the Ducati is my son. And my mother was like, yeah, I just got the H3. I said, yeah, they're nice. He was like, yeah, you paid for it. It should be. I said, what the f***? Huh? He like, <laughs> that's how I know I got in too much trouble in one year. Because he told, my lawyer told me I paid for it. His, his son's H, I mean, his H3 and his son's Ducati. I'm like, wait a minute. How much money I really get his food this year? So, I mean... So anyway, my I was trying to say, I knew I had to change up what, what, what I was going through and everything. When everything, because my my son is about to be eighteen, the grace of God, and my daughter is about to be twenty one. And you know, when they were younger, what should have made me realize that I needed to change up some of the things that I was doing. Because every time I went to jail, okay, bye, Dad. We'll see you later. Like it was no like love involved, no care or concern. Okay, this nigga will bail out. He'll be all right. You know what I mean? They mom had some motherfucking, and my was serious. They mom had some motherfucking traffic warrants. And they was putting her in the back of the car, taking her to the, and my two was like, oh my God, ma. Oh. And they was crying. I was like, if y'all motherfuckers don't get your ass in, go check your motherfucking ass in the house. Y'all ain't never cried for me. When I go, see you later, dad. That's all I got. You know what I mean? And then my mom leave, oh, all of a sudden, it's the end of the world. They're like, what the fuck? So that's what I know. I was like, okay, I need to change up. My children's perception of me, because like, <laughs> they was like, all right, man, how that should we get out? But, you know, mom go to jail for some damn traffic warrants. It's the end of the world. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you know, moms, man, they always hold a special place in the kid's heart. You know, I'm going to ask you something now, because it's kind of deep. Um, we kind of talked about earlier, we was talking about before we started taking the recording yeah. industry, the music industry, yeah. on how it seems like it purposelessly leaves its participant scar. You know, there are a few people Wait. on the outside looking in, they may be doing well, they may be getting this, but you know, when you know these people, 
and you see the stuff that they're going through, you hear about the, you know, the mental anguish and everything like yeah. that. Do you think that music industry, and particularly the urban music industry, goes out its way to kind of keep us in a stupor? No, I think um, we do it to ourselves. I mean, you know, some people know how to succeed and and do the right thing. Some people, you know, never had anything in life, you know, never had the right structure or anything like that in life. And once they feel like they're somebody, it goes to their head and they feel like they're above the law, they're on top of the world, and they feel like can't nobody tell them nothing. It goes to their head to where, like, they make a lot of wrong decisions. You know what I mean? As a human being, like, just because, like, for instance, my name is Royal Harbor. That's what I was born as. And the character that I created for myself to make money is nocturnal. But that's not who I am as a person. That's a person that, that I created to entertain this world and make some money and have my family and everything be okay. But nocturnal is not who I really am. I mean, of course, I stay up at night at work and all that. And, you know, that, that's why I created that name for myself because I'm a night owl. You know, and I got insomnia. It's hard for me to sleep and all that. So the, the, the name fits me. But Royal Harbor is who I am. Nocturnal is a character I created to to further myself in the music business and make some money and show the world who I am and where I came from. Mm -hmm. But individually, as a person, I'm still a human being just like everybody else. You know what I mean? I, I, I eat, sh sleep, shave. Fucking comb my hair, fucking brush my teeth. I mean, take a shower. I, mean, I do everything everybody else do. I'm not on the pivotal. I'm not better than anybody. I'm not worse than anybody. I'm just a human being like everybody. I'm not a person to be praised. I'm not a person you, you're supposed to look up to. I'm definitely not a person you need to look up to because I had a lot of bullshit I did when I was growing up. I was not a perfect people at all. But one thing I can say is I made it all out of all of the bullshit and turmoil that I've been through. God saw fit to make a way for me to be okay. And that's a that's a very, very, very good thing. And I appreciate that always from, from the grace of God is that he always shows me that I'll be all right as long as I trust that he's got my back. Smooth Cut Productions. Productions. Productions.